Welcome to the new Fist of the Heavens Paladin Guide here on MaxRoll.gg. In this guide, we're going to cover the new version of the Fist of the Heavens Paladin that's available in patch 2.4. We'll start with the starter version of the build that you could expect to be able to play starting as early as level 75 with gear that's easily available early in the game. Moving into what the standard version of the build is as far as the majority of people are going to play and just an idea of what some of the best items and equipment might be. And then finally covering what I think is truly the most optimal version of the build, something that I've coined the term for Tribrid Paladin. This is going to include Fist of the Heavens, Blessed Hammer, and a Smite version all in one package. The reason why this build is coming into its own is because with the changes in patch 2.4, Fist of the Heavens is a skill that says deal lightning damage to a single target and then shoot a Holy Bolt out to every target within range. These Holy Bolts can now hit undead and demons and as well as pierce. So while they won't shotgun, they will travel through any monster that they get hit by and go on to hit monsters behind them as well. Fist of the Heavens is a skill that gains synergies from two different sources that buffets two different types of damage. Holy Shock from the Offensive Aura Tree will increase the lightning damage of the initial missile that hits the target, but Holy Bolt here in the Combat Tree will increase the magic damage of the Holy Bolts that radiate out from the impact. When coupled with auras like Conviction, which will drastically reduce enemies' lightning resistance, with this aura you're able to basically double all of the damage that is coming out from the lightning source of Fist of the Heavens, as well as break immune to lightning monsters, allowing you to deal damage to them when otherwise you would be barred from doing so. Add on defensive auras like Vigor Aura drastically increasing your run walk speed so that traveling to and from town into your farming spots becomes a breeze even before you have access to something like teleport. So let's go ahead and cover the strengths and weaknesses of each setup, where the build really shines, as well as your skill point allocation in gear selection, as well as that of your mercenary so that you're fully prepared to be able to pilot this build at whatever stage of the gameplay you find yourself at. The starter version of the build here is built out as if we were only level 75, so I will have extra skill points left over, but I wanted to be able to replicate the normal strength of a character if they were wearing this gear at a lower level. The character is built out as if they were level 75 as far as skill point allocations are concerned, we will assume that you've done all of the additional quests which get you extra attributes as well as extra skill points and all of the gear that's found here is easily farmable as of nightmare difficulty with none of the runes being used in this build above an am rune. The major focus of gear especially on the starter variant is that you're looking to maximize your plus to skills faster cast rate and then for defensive you're looking for all resistances faster hit recovery and then any bumps to flat life or mana that you can get your hands on spirit sword and spirit shield are one of the big powerhouses as far as early game gear progression is concerned especially on the paladin since it's so easy to get into a four socket shield here you're going to be gaining up to plus four skills up to 70 faster cast rate 110 faster hit recovery and then a massive amount of additional resistances, especially if you happen to find an auric shield or a paladin shield that has upwards of 20, 30, or even 40 all res on the base itself. For the rest of the gear, we're using the easily obtainable stealth rune word, as well as lore, which you can farm as early as Nightmare Countess. Everything from the boots, the belt, and the gloves, these were all gambled from Geed in Nightmare, and they can all be shopped at the same time. These rare gloves, anything that's going to give you additional dexterity or resistances is really nice, so it's easier to hit the 75% chance to block that we have when Holy Shield is active. As far as amulets, anything that's going to give you plus to skills and faster cast rate, just making sure to hit the 125 breakpoint. And then for rings, again, we're looking for a faster cast rate and all res. These are just some examples of what you could find. Consider doing the Gidbin quest in Act 3 so that Ormus will drop off some rare rings to give you a really good chance at some of these stats. On the swap to bolster our mobility, we're using a Staff of Teleportation. This can be shopped as early as Act 3 in Normal, and it'll cost you anywhere between 17,000 to 200,000 gold from Ormus. But keep shopping until you get your hands on this. And keep in mind that repairing this staff will cost you about 70,000 gold, 
or if you're low on gold, you can put an Ort Rune and any chip gem into your Herodric Cube with this staff and it will fully repair all of the charges free of charge. No pun intended. For our attributes, we're putting in enough strength to use our gear, then we're putting in enough dexterity so that once we cast Holy Shield, we'll have the 75% chance to block. Make sure to keep this up as often as you can so that you can survive a lot of attacks. The rest of our stat points are going directly into vitality and you'll see with our current setup we have over 1300 life and nearly 400 mana. For the mercenary you're going to want to go ahead and build an insight in whatever exceptional or elite base you can find. If it could be ethereal that would be even better. If you're really hard pressed for one of these feel free to farm something like nightmare cows until a base drops that would roll up to four sockets. For the rest of their gear, you just want to help the mercenary to stack survivability and life stolen per hit. To that end, we build him a smoke. Lum rune is something that you can farm in Nightmare Countess, and this is going to give him 50 plus to his all res, which is a massive boost to his overall survivability. And then something as simple as an undead crown. While there are a lot of stats on here, really the only thing that matters is that 5% life stolen per hit. This is going to give him the ability to sustain himself but in a pinch, you can also hit him with your Holy Bolts and feed him potions if he's not surviving. Now for the skills themselves, again, remember we're replicating as if we're level 75, so that's why we still have skill points left over here. But there are primary skills that we want to max out to increase our overall success at farming. You're going to max Holy Bolt as a synergy and then put one point into all of the prerequisites that are required to drop down to Fist of Heavens and then max this out as well. Coming into your offensive auras, you want to pick up all of the prereqs and then put in enough points so that Conviction Aura is at its maximum minus enemy res, which would be 150. The reason why this is so important, especially on the starter version of the build, is that while you're progressing through the game, you are going to have to rely on the lightning damage of Fist of Heavens to kill anything that isn't undead or a demon. This is felt most significantly in areas like the Ancients fight, where none of those are considered to be undead or demons, so only your flat lightning damage is your option for actually handling them, as well as your mercenaries damage. Before you put points in anywhere else, at least pick up one point into Vigor Aura, especially before Teleport, this is going to be your best version of mobility, and it's going to give you a lot of great run speed in town as well, where you end up spending a lot of your time waiting for different group games to start up, or shopping and gambling, etc. The remaining points are going to go down into Holy Shock as a synergy for Fist of Heavens. Other options on this build if you're willing to sacrifice some of the damage, which I would not recommend removing from Holy Bolt, but you could take out of Holy Shock to gain access to a few things, would be Concentration Aura, Fanaticism Aura, especially for your Mercenary, and then going down to either Redemption Aura or Salvation. One of the reasons why the Fist of the Heavens is an S-tier starter build for the latter is especially targeted at group play. The fact that you don't technically need any of your auras for your majority of the damage is going to be coming from your Holy Bolts that are coming out of the Fist of Heavens, you have a free aura slot that can go a long way to help out group play. Starter areas to begin farming on this build would include the Chaos Sanctuary, oddly enough, once you have access to teleport and can travel there quickly with a teleport staff on swap. In Act 5, target farming Pindle is one of the best places, considering your Holy Bolts immediately rip through him and his entire pack. In Act 3, you're able to very quickly begin farming something like the Traven Call and the council members there, since they're all demons. In Act 2, the brand new farming area, the Sewing Tombs, is a great place to go. Just keep in mind that the beetles in there are not undead or demons and typically have decent lightning resistance, so I would recommend keeping Conviction Aura up and just popping the boss of any beetle packs that you find, or if you have a particularly beefy mercenary, keep him healed with Holy Bolt while he finishes the job for you. And then just another thing to remember, every single act boss in this game is considered to be a demon. So while it might take you a little while to get to Indariel or Mephisto, you're definitely able to farm them, especially with Holy Bolt, since you'll be dumping over 3,000 magic damage into them with each cast at the second highest FCR breakpoint if you have similar gear to what we showed here. The standard variant of the build really comes into its own, still prioritizing that lightning damage to be able to elite snipe with incredible efficiency, but finally having enough skill points and plus to skills to really capitalize on the massive density clear and area farming abilities that Fist of Heavens is best known for with the Holy Bolts coming out of the projectile itself. We're gaining access at 9 
7,000 magic damage holy bolt for a single target undead and demons, as well as 7,000 damage from Fist of Heavens, with the holy bolts themselves doing 5,600 damage on average. This, coupled with a max level minus 150 conviction aura here, means that we're doing upwards to double damage on any target that isn't immune to lightning with this single target, meaning we're able to dump 14,000 pure damage into any target, regardless of their resistances. With our gear, we have enough strength to wear it, enough dexterity to hit 75% chance to block, and then the rest of our stats go straight into vitality. With Battle Command and Battle Orders up from Call to Arms, we have close to 4,000 life as well as 300 mana. Now keep this in mind, this is the ideal standard variant, meaning that this gear is near perfect and exactly hand tailored to get the most out of the build as possible. Any of the gear pieces that, see, that you see here, like the crafted amulet, can easily be supplemented by having more faster cast rate on the ring slots, and your charms, as long as they have plus to skills, are more than good enough with any amount of plus to life or faster hit recovery that are available on them. We use a Heart of the Oak Griffins with an Umrun in it right now. You could also put a Facet into this. Enigma for the Teleport, plus two skills, faster run walk, strength to wear our gear, or magic find, you can't say enough about this piece. A 22020 res caster amulet for paladin, a haw shield for the maximum amount of plus to our combat skills. You could either put in Eldrune to save you some stat points to put into vitality, or an Umrun for additional res, or an Istrune for magic find. On the boots, we're using Alders for that flat life and faster run walk. These could also be war traps or any exceptionally good rare boot options with faster run walk, hit recovery, tri res, or magic find. Any two skill rings, but if you needed FCR, here's where you'd be able to fit it onto the build. Arachnids mesh for the skill in FCR, as well as Mage Fist. Now you could definitely use triangles as well, but we don't need cold res, and I prefer to have the regen mana on this slot. Across our charms, we're using 40 life with plus two combat skills, life with all res, these could also be all res with magic find, and then an annihilus charm and a torch. On swap, we're using a call to arms, as well as a spirit shield to get that plus two to skills to buff up our battle command and our battle orders. On the mercenary, we're using the upgraded version of the same starter gear. So we have insight, an ethereal elite base, and a thresher, and in Dario's visage with a 15 IS 30 fire res jewel to offset the minus res from the item itself. This would preferably be ethereal as well as a fortitude and archon plate. This would also prefer to be in an ethereal sacred armor. With our gear and skill layout, we are at the point where we are gaining the most powerful version of the AoE clear speed that we can have, especially in places like the Chaos Sanctuary. But the lightning damage along with our conviction aura means that we are an incredibly versatile elite sniper. This is a farming strategy where you go into a high area level, area level 85, like the Pit, Stony Tombs, the new Arachnid layer, and you would be able to just instantaneously one tap any of the bosses in the packs and then pick up your loot and move on. You wouldn't typically worry about clearing out any of the additional minions, but if they're undead or demons, they're going to naturally get cleared out by the Holy Bolts coming off of Fist of Heaven. This build has everything that you could want as far as density clear and single target elite sniping. You gain access to a wide range of farming areas, and with our max chance to block, high life, decent defense, and max range of our skill use, with our huge conviction aura and our fist of the heavens, you're basically unkillable, and this version of the build is incredibly hardcore viable. On this version of the build, you can even take it into two of what are arguably the most dangerous farming areas in the game, outside of the Ubers themselves, and that would be either the Swampy Pit in Act 3, which is a new area level 85 that is full of undead dolls, souls, and ghosts, but you're able to kill them at max range, or take it into some place like the Worldstone Keep where other than some monsters which are not demons or undead which you would have to skip you're able to completely obliterate every screen of the other monster types before moving on this build's magic find can be pushed even further especially if you're farming on players one settings because on an elite sniper build you really only care about killing the boss as fast as possible and then your magic find will also help to boost the chances of any of the additional items that drop off of monsters rolling as magic quality or higher 
And now absolutely my most exciting build variant to show off to you here is the Tri-Brid Pally. This idea is that it is two separate hybrid pallies all in one, or three total builds, i.e. Tri-Brid. This is going to be a full Fist of the Heavens Paladin that is focusing on the magic of Holy Bolt damage coming off of the projectile, a half strength hammered in which you're going to use to kill in all those scenarios where the fist of the heavens paladin either isn't farming an undead or a demon type monster or has the ability to precast spells to get a lot of additional damage out of the hammers and then lastly like you just saw on bail being a near 50 percent crushing blow smiter using your own fanaticism aura while also giving fanaticism aura over to your act 5 mercenary that's carrying two very important weapons to help increase clear speed especially against higher player settings act bosses and with a swap out of just a few key gear pieces this build also walks in and absolutely stomps all of the ubers single-handedly on the kit, we're able to still sport that 9,000 damage Holy Bolt for single targets, a 2,400 lightning damage, as well as 5,600 magic damage on the Holy Bolts that come out of Fist of Heavens itself, and then rocking a 6k Blessed Hammer when you have your Concentration Aura up. Not only that, but with the gear that we're wearing, we're at the second fastest smite attack frame when we have our fanaticism or up, which is also going to increase the attack speed of our mercenary. Instead of showing you the gear first, I want to go over the skill tree so that you better understand the gear pieces that we're wearing and why we made these decisions. We are still maxing out Holy Bolt and Fist of the Heavens, but we're also maxing out Blessed Hammer, then one point into everything else in the combat tree. For offensive auras, we're going down to Fanaticism Aura as one point. We're no longer picking up Conviction Aura since we really do not need this at any point since we're no longer focusing on the lightning damage aspect of Fist of the Heaven. That saves us a minimum of five skill points since we don't need any of the prereqs either, and that allows us to put the rest of our dump points into Blessed Aim. In the defensive skill tree, we're maxing out Vigor since this is one of the synergies for Blessed Hammer, and we're putting the one point into Salvation just in case you're still in a group party focused mindset. Not only that, having a max level Vigor Aura is going to ridiculously increase your run speed in town, making your farming sessions all that more efficient. Now since we're trying to be a smiter, a blessed hammer paladin, and a fist of heavens paladin all in one, we needed to find some very key gear pieces that allow us to excel in all three of these fields. This is most noticeable in the selection of Heaven's Light Mighty Scepter. Heaven's Light is a scepter that typically says 3 to paladin skills, 20 increased attack speed, and then that very necessary 33% chance of crushing blow. Not only that, it naturally comes along with two sockets, so you're easily able to slot two shell runes into this to get up to the second fastest breakpoint for smite, and you also have plus 20 life gained per demon kill. This goes a very long way to keep your paladin healthy and alive, especially when you start farming in Player's 8 content like the Chaos Sanctuary, which is what this build looks to excel in to shore up any of the issues that Fist of the Heavens had in clearing the same areas. Now, why do we say that? Very typically right now, there is a bit of an argument in the community between Blessed Hammer and Fist of Heavens, and the generalized idea was that Blessed Hammer is still stronger in Player's 8 content, just because magic damage is so difficult to overcome at the speed that the Hammerdin can pump it out. Since Fist of the Heavens actually clears out the first two seals, so Lord DeSace and Grand Vizier are faster than Hammers, the only one that was still a problem was Infector of Souls, just because they're so tanky. But with the addition of the Hammer package, as well as the Crushing Blow here so that your kill speed on Diablo and Bale is still exceptional, we're able to shore up those issues and overall gain a stronger and safer farming strategy in places like Player's 8 Chaos Sanctuary. For the rest of the build, the gear does need to be very fine-tuned to be able to maintain the 125 FCR breakpoint when you are on your swap with Spirit, so the gear is in an ideal state, and any places where you would need more faster cast rate, you'd have to sacrifice an additional ring slot. On the helmet, we're using a 220 all-res diadem that came along with two sockets. Here, you're going to put in cannot be frozen source and then anything else that you would like either an Istrin for the Magic Fine or a Burr Rune for the damage reduction. The Cannot Be Frozen is so important here, since both Diablo and Bale have chilling attacks that will slow down your smite, 
you need to have cannot be frozen in at least one of your gear pieces. This is the easiest place to get it. 220 with all res amulet. This could also have access to telekinesis charges if you're looking to be a super tryhard and get the most efficient farming possible, being able to TK waypoints and town portals with ease. Earl of Zacrum, again with either an Eldrune, Istrune, or Umrune, depending on what stats you're looking for. Mage Fist for the FCR one skill ring along with the arachnid mesh, and then a 10 FCR all res ring here where we do have our telekinesis charges. You're going to need at least one piece to maintain that 125. And if you have a worse crafted amulet, you might need an additional piece here. For the boots, we are using gore riders. Now you can absolutely be using goblin toes for the additional 10% crushing blow. I will say that since this is our only easy source of open wounds on the build, and you would need that if you wanted to take this into Ubers, I like to use the Gore Riders here as an example as the more overall better statted gear piece for higher functionality or multiple variations in functionality. But if you were just looking for Crushing Blow for P8 Act bosses, you would absolutely use Goblin Toe here instead. If you're still on lower player count, but you're using this version of the build, these could be War Travs or GG Rare Boots with Runwalk, Tri Res, and Magic Fine. Across the bottom, we're still using Skillers with Life as well as Life and All Res. These could also be All Res and Magic Find. And if you wanted to hit the next breakpoint, you would replace four of these with Hit Recovery since we no longer have Spirit on the main hand. We would need to find our Hit Recovery from our Charms. On the swap, we are using Call to Arms and Spirit Shield. The Spirit Shield is where we actually hit the 125 breakpoint. So keep that in mind when you're teleporting, you want to teleport on your swap. Now I talked about the mercenary, then this mercenary is very fine tuned to very specifically help us with our kill speed against high players count act bosses. So to that end, for his survivability, we're giving him a Chains of Honor. This is going to buff up his all res along with bringing that damage reduction and plus to skills. The rest of the stats are just gravy along with that life leech so he can actually sustain. He's using a G face right now. That's going to give him that crushing blow and deadly strike. We currently need to put a Korun in for dex, but if he was level 87, you would have enough dexterity to be able to use phase blades and you would either put in a res increased attack speed or enhanced damage strength jewel into the slot. For his weapons, he is using a death and a phase blade. This is to get him access to that 50% crushing blow, which when added to the 35% crushing blow of G-Face, means on one hand he's going to have an 85% chance of crushing blow, and when he's on max frenzy stacks with our fanaticism aura up, he's attacking at an incredibly fast max IAS breakpoint, so he is applying crushing blow at a very regular consistency, and to buff out his crushing blow and our crushing blow, he's going to be using a Lawbringer. Lawbringer here is dual faceted, the Decrepify Aura is going to reduce enemies' physical res, which would increase our crushing blow damage against them, as well as giving him access to that Sanctuary Aura is going to keep Undead bunched up at the edge of the screen, so that there are more monsters within range that when you cast Fist of Heavens, Holy Bolts are going to hit more targets simultaneously. The best part about the version of the Tribrid Paladin is when you ask the question, where can you farm? The answer is yes. This character on this build variant can literally do all content in the game. and is not forced to skip any monster packs. He's not forced to run away from any fights. He has maximum survivability, maximum increased chance to block, huge amounts of life and mana when fully buffed with battle orders and battle command the access to Crushing Blow, which you need for increased clear speed against bosses, the ability to precast his hammers. In situations like the Bale Waves, you're able to precast your hammers and then lay into them with Fist of Heaven, so you're literally getting maximum damage out of both skills simultaneously, and also be able to precast your hammers on people like Diablo, where you know he's going to spawn at the end of his timer, so that you can waste as little time as possible finishing him off with either Smite on higher player count, or just hitting him with that max FCR 9k magic damage from Holy. If you haven't already, please check out the fully written guide where I go into all these nuances, keep all the notes, all the mercenary gear, all the build variants, the starter version and what to prioritize, etc. for your viewing pleasure. I'll go ahead and include the video here as well. So if you bookmark the guide, you can always return to this video. If you ever wanted to go over a specific area or needed to be reminded why we chose the items or skill selection that we did. All in all, I do believe that this is the absolute best version of the Paladin. And I cannot say enough just how powerful it is 
once you have the gear necessary to swap over to the Tribrid, where you literally have access to all of the strongest skills in the game. Thank you so much for watching this video and for checking out the guide on maxroll.gg. I look forward to seeing you in the next one.